to today's NCCR news. It's not so much news this time, we are talking about dirt. this. Yes. <laughs> yes, we're talking about dirt. We're gonna make a lot of dirt. Yeah. So today we broadcast live from the dirt room. <laughs> oh my god, this sounds so much worse than it's actually gonna be. Um, or fun, I don't know. So we have been getting requests on how we actually did the charcoal box delete. And so we figured we do it again and make it very easy to follow this time. So we printed everything in colorful pieces. And so it's gonna be orange. This is not what we usually print in. This is PLA. I would also use PTG, but it's all gonna be very colorful. So you guys can see what's going on. Yeah, the idea is to walk you through the process of yeah. the perform performance, airbox modification, mm -hmm. um, you remember the file is uh, available, available yes. for download. Julia made another file with yes. a two-piece construction. Because not everyone's 3D printer is large enough to print it as one. So I made one with a funny little puzzle piece so you can put it together and print it after each other. Yeah. So, so um, let's quickly, um, Julia, walk us through the function of the ventilation of the yeah. of the PBR. it's pretty straightforward actually so what you do have is you have first a valve and we took that out so you guys can see it this is what it looks like and it makes funny sounds because if you look into it actually opened one up this is the actual valve and this is a brass ball so it's kind of heavy actually and what it does is this ball is in its little bowl here. And when the bike is running, this is of course shaking and going up and forth and whatnot. And also, and then it is touching this part of the valve. So just because I like making a fool out of myself, <laughs> this is the unopened one. So when the ball inside is touching the white part of the valve, like so, you can blow through right so now it's open but when it is a little bit to the side like let's say like this like when the bike is parked exactly on the sides there theoretically <laughs> oh yeah but, no no way <laughs> yeah so that yeah. is the idea that yeah. this brass ball inside when it's straight up or when it's running so it's rattling it is touching this so the air can go through but once it's parked on the side stand then the ball will not touch this anymore and the valve will be closed yeah this this uh, valve came with the fuel framers uh, with uh, with the xb model this is not new no and then um, it was all uh, overtaken to the 1125 and uh, that way it made it also to the 11 90. It's a very, very uh, proven technology um, and, 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 and uh, to understand it a bit um, also uh, why it is nothing to think about if it will work proper on the 1190. All the 1125 and also all the XP have just this um, vent valve and from there goes the hose um, uh, uh, at the, yeah, at these bikes uh, over the airbox and then in a poly tube down uh, and out uh, uh, to the air. So that is on all 1125 and on all XP uh, the fuel ventilation. You That's don't need more. For race application you would route now the hose into a reservoir uh, to make sure that yeah. there can be nothing spilled. But that is a proven uh, ventilation okay. for the Buell tube, uh, for the Buell, sorry, aluminium frame. But then the 1190 came along and so did regulations. Yeah. So this is why we have the charcoal. We already opened it up before, but we will do it again. So you will be able to see it again. So basically what this does, I can just hold it like this. You have here, here normal, uh, that comes from the, the normal hose that comes from the vent. You have a little tunnel here that connects to there. Here you have your EVAP that comes from, I'm sorry, that comes from the intake. 
this is not what it looks usually looks like but this is one that we have it's not finished yet it's one from the racing so here the evap wood the evap valve is and then you have the fumes coming from here and both enters into this tunnel and from the tunnel we go into the big canister or the box. Chocolate canister. yes mm. and in here we have a labyrinth kind of style so it's a maze and i'll show you also exactly how it's going through there and then it goes out here under to the atmosphere down here that hole so yeah. why do we kick it out yeah performance it's all about performance volume volume yes. you 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 want to have as maximum as possible volume in the airbox and you want to have the uh, throttle bodies as free as possible um, uh, the, the airstream around the throttle bodies as less restricted as possible and here the situation originally is that the throttle bodies have this wall on one side and um, that is also something where we expect to see uh, better numbers uh, on the dyno so it is more volume, uh, uh, it is less uh, restriction and it's less weight. The only thing that is it is not anymore legal in some of street legal in California and maybe some European countries. But yeah. we are saying that this is for race track only. So yeah. Race use. yeah. So before we start this, actually, we have to do the all American disclaimer. Yeah, so, of course. Don't do it. Yes. Just, just, just don't, don't do, do it. it. That's easy. Just, just say uh, 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 you don't want to have that. Yeah. So, well, then you're not getting into into risk. If you want to do this modification, you need to understand what you are doing. Yes. You need to understand that uh, it can be dangerous. That you. It use... may result in death. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, um, the, the fuel system have went, depending how old your bike is, for a while into this charcoal canister. Yes. So the first thing what you do after you remove the airbox bottom, you, uh, the best is you turn it upside down and let it lay for, for a while in case there is some liquid fuel somewhere stored. We have from the five or six uh, airboxes we slaughtered already, we have seen no um, f liquid fuel in no. it's only that the charcoal smells it smells a little bit of it uh, yes. a little bit fuel but just to be sure just turn it around and uh, if there would be some liquid fuel in it will would pour out of the uh, two um, connection points yeah. uh, of the hoses we also thought like if you absolutely want to be sure you could drill in holes through the lids but that's Nothing we have done, but you could, of course, if you want to be of super course, sure. Of course, of course. Better be safe than sorry. And we use only air-driven tools. Yes. Um, no sparks. So no sparks. And um, if you are unsure, uh, you can flush, uh, of course, uh, through the holes, uh, 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 the system with water. You could... Uh, air pressure. Yeah, air pressure. You, you, you absolutely should uh, do it outside if you are unsure. We do it in the dirt room uh, because uh, yeah. we can understand what risk is there and uh, if there is... It is also very dirty. It's you, also you'll be cutting all of this away and there will be so much plastic everywhere. Yeah. Also, what you should think about before you go and slaughter anything at all, you have to take out the gasket. That's why yeah, it's behind here. you somewhere lying there. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you also should remove the clamps because they're just in the way. Yeah. Because yeah. you'll be cutting kind of close here and kind of close there. So just remove them. Then you don't have to go looking for them or cut in them. So yeah. that's the two big things. Then use protection, everyone. <laughs> yeah, you should use um, eye protection, of course. Yeah, uh, either visor or goggles. Yeah, and something over your ears. And um, yeah, depending uh, how much uh, ventilation you have, maybe even uh, uh, one of these uh, masks could be yeah. very good to have. It's very much, yeah, it's, it's very dusty, it's very dirty. I, I heard it's anyhow quite update to use masks now. So um, mm. yeah, just uh, 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 
be no fool, yeah. understand. And if you have too many questions regarding the process, maybe then it is just not something you want Should to be. do. Yes. Um, uh, 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 the, the minimum what you need to have is a Dremel, um, what is electric driven, so uh, then you should definitely do it maybe outside or have a flexible wire that you are not too close. Um, again, um, there might be a, ter a theoretical risk um uh, uh but um i uh, we haven't seen any so far no, but it's exactly. always better to be safe than sorry gloves of course especially when you're gluing so you don't want to get your fatty fingerprints onto the surface after you've cleaned it but also before when you're doing the dirty work you use mm. normal gloves mm. um that's pretty much it should be usually we say don't be an idiot yeah exactly yeah, but we do have to have to do the disclaimer, so here you go. <laughs> yeah, um, just to uh, to say that again, um, the parts you see here now are uh, uh, specially made for higher visibility. Yes. Like also, um, we have the, um, the the plastic tube, the connection tube in blue. Yes, um, we can kind of see it here. The solar poly tube. We use yeah. the blue one. We use like. Everything in color, yeah, so you can see it. That it is in the explanation uh, better to see. Yes. Um, we just at the moment put the the the, the kit together, mm -hmm. um, and we still wait for some parts uh, coming in. Um, uh, you, if you, in real, when you look now into the video, you understand that there is nothing. If you have a three D printer that you can print out Julia's file. And uh, the the stuff you need is more or less available in each hardware store. Yes. So and you can of course get everything in black. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so so it is exactly no rocket science to do uh, this modification. Um, so um, we have no problem if you say yeah why I should buy now uh, this kit. The kit is only uh, uh, made from us for the people who maybe uh, I just don't want to uh, look uh, uh, to find the parts or um, have no have possibility yeah. or no time or yeah. no possibility for printing. Um, uh, one thing, um, this performance modification is based of all our uh, former coming uh, modifications. Yeah. So uh, we will, uh, when we uh, uh, start now with all the dyno work on all the different things we have in the de development pipeline um, we will just at the beginning maybe go back because there is some stuff we want to see what else can be found in the airbox but that from then on all our developments are based on a, an empty airbox with a full volume mm -hmm. uh, because it is just right and logic and uh, Nothing, nothing in real to discuss. And if you want to see us explain why we think, why we think this is the best solution, and if you are wondering other things, we have other videos where we already talked about it, so we're not going to talk that much about the no. theory behind it. So yeah. this is basically just how do I do this? How do I slot yeah. this video? Yeah, you, uh, 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 you can, you can sign to our uh, channel on, on YouTube or you can just uh, scroll down and then uh, you see there are videos about uh, performance modification, uh, there are videos about uh, uh, um, why we think this is the right way to go. Um, so let's start. Let's, let's slaughter let's, this. Let's do some dirt. <laughs> yeah. yeah.
So now we've chopped off the lid. And as you saw before, this is not the normal that you will find, the normal airbox that you will find in your bike, because this one is an unfinished for racing. So you see it's lacking some pieces. And also it was lacking the coal. I put these ones in so you understand what you're seeing when you open yours. And you should be having the coal in here, but as I said, it's been empty. And also you have the little felts here. So what basically happens, we have our little friend here again. So our fumes go through here and through here, go from this to the other side under, it's like a little tunnel. This is where the evap is connecting. And here we have a little felt, which is basically only hindering the coal from falling into here. So we arrive in here, down there. We have a little hole here that connects us to the next chamber. You can see it maybe, if I put my light here, you can see that it slides through here. So you have the next chamber here. Here's a little wall where the fumes go over. Down here in the bottom, there's a hole again. So that's where we're going into the next chamber here on this side. From here, we're going over the wall again and through here, here's a little hole again down here. And here is the last felt, felt, sorry. And under here, you have a hole that goes to the outside. So maybe if I shine like this, you can see I can shine through. So we are connected to the outside at all times. It's not exactly what you would call a closed circuit, but of course, when this one is closed, it is closed, but that's only when we're standing still. So. Now you know we're going through a labyrinth here, all the way through all the coal, and then we are clean and everyone's happy. And the air also can go the other way around, of course. So fumes one way, air the other way. So now we start cutting the raw bit. So we start cutting away the bigger pieces, exactly like that. But you have to be very careful because these points are uh, we keeping so you go in a line like that and also you have to be very very careful that you don't hurt where the um oh what's that called again where the liner is going in so the that lid roof. Yeah, the lid roof so do not destroy that otherwise it will not be tied <laughs> your blade also otherwise it is uh, not possible to remove it so
just keep chopping at it until you have removed everything that you don't need. So what we are keeping are the two spots basically where the felts were lying. So where we go to the outside and where we have come in on the left side. So we're keeping the wall in between them and you can see that there is also a height difference in them. So you don't want to hurt the wall on either sides of them. And the other walls you basically are just chopping down and grinding in the end. But be careful not to make holes that go all the way through. So if you can see some light here, like that, that's not a problem. You will glue that shut. So that is not a problem. So don't be afraid when you see that because that was very poorly glued in from the beginning. So don't worry about it. Yeah, well, it, it was not intentionally not constructed that somebody cut it out. But that uh, 3D printed cover will all uh, cover. Yes. Uh, here you see the last hole. 
That's the yeah. low one that I was talking about. Yep. Yeah. carefully because here you are really cutting down to the groove where the lid is closing so um, you can you can grind that or cut that but um, uh, this is the tricky area here around this uh, lock clamp piece and then a little bit here that is also a little bit tricky to cut out getting more hole that will when we grind that down it will get a, even bigger but that will be all covered uh, with the inlay
that you print this first because it's a really good guideline. Because now you can see, no, it doesn't fit quite yet. Still too much material here. And of course, under this has to be, it has to be flat, but it hasn't, doesn't have to be smooth. It's actually not bad. It's actually an advantage if it would be rough because then the glue will adhere better. But it, uh, it cannot be like this, like things standing up everywhere and here you have this little tunnel that's this tunnel of course and this portion actually is a little bit higher than this portion that's why you have the height difference between this plane here and this plane so i recommend it print it first and then you see also it follows the outline and you will understand what is going where down here the same and also here this hole is in front of this so this will close this area off but you will have the tube going through there so print it first and then you know what to do so as you've seen before we are almost only using air tools because, well, first of all they're easy to use and we like them and also you do not have the risk that there might be any sparks flying and we are today not exactly in a used air box but you will be in a used air box and there might be fuel and there might be something left so either uh, make sure that there's no fuel left or just use ashes like we do. to be super finely grinded smooth and don't get through the the base so all what we what you want to take off are the ribs you'll not want to to, uh, to make any holes and stay careful here here it's very easy to make a hole as we've tried we've done that don't do it <laughs> yeah to do is you want to pre-bend your polytube a little bit so you heat it up with the heat gun but put something in while you're bending it otherwise it might collapse on itself and then nothing will go through so it's pre-bent a little bit i made a little tool maybe you don't need it i just use it to fish it around the corner you put it in here you can see it there then the idea is to put it in and pull it to make it glide a bit we use not real lubrication <laughs> It's just a brake cleaner. 
see the loop of the little tool, put it in, get around the corner. Oh God, no. Now it's around the corner. And then you basically just shove it. So now that you have shortened it, make sure that the ends are looking nice because you don't want to pinch anything. You want the fumes to go through. So we are keeping this hole actually because we might need it later, who knows. So we're just using a screw and a nut on there. So that's easy peasy really. I'm not gonna tighten it all the way now, just for you guys to see. We are for now keeping this. Doesn't matter really, you can also cut it off. It, as long as you either glue it here or cut it off and then glue there. You can also fill all this up with glue if you want. The 3D part covers it, so you can either choose to fill up the whole tunnel or just the edge here. This will also be glued. And here we have our tube that we have from before. It's the old one. I would just put that on there. There we go, all good. We mark the arrow approximately in the middle. Then we drill a hole. And in this case, we have a grommet what needs 25 millimeter. So once you're done, you should have something looking like this. You have your polytube, you have glued this or not, depends on how you like it, or you have cut this or not. You have your screw in, you have your grommet down here, and now we are at the 3D part. So go through there, and now this should fit quite snugly. It should be quite flexible when you, paint, uh, when you printed it in the 0.9 millimeters. So just the way that it was. And oops. If you've printed the two-piece version, that one, it's basically the same. The only thing you have to think about when you glue it later is that the puzzle piece has to be. You have to put more clamps there. But it should work just the same. So we'll look at something like this. So once you start to come to you the point where you want to glue it in, be very, very sure that there is no dust on it. So we blew it off with air pressure. Be sure that it's not greasy because you want the glue to stick, of course. And what we always, or what we have been doing is we do it like dry train it once. So we put everything in place, then we clamp it down. The more clamps, the better. And it will get very side heavy. So be sure that you know all that before because once you got the glue on there, and of course we would be wearing gloves too. So as, as we said again, it's just a mock-up. So be sure you know where you are placing your clamps. So what we did, we put all the clamps out and then we took a photo. So we didn't have to stress once the glue was on. You can just put as many clamps as you basically get there to make sure that it's tight everywhere all the way down even here and if you're using the two-part version which has the puzzle piece here be sure that both sides are very well clamped there so try it out once on the drive first so you know where the clamps are because if i put away my hand now that will happen and you don't want that happening when you have the glue on so it just as a 
short recap. This is what it looked like. This is where you started, right? So you had the normal setup where the fumes will come out here, go through it to the tunnel, and here you have the evap. And your fumes will go through the labyrinth in the charcoal, remember? And here we have the fumes coming from the intake, so that is what we started with, right? And now... This is what we got. So, all you gotta do basically is put this one back on and then you will have the tubing going from the poly hose and this is why you have these hoops so you can uh, use cable straps and put your hose all the way down here and out to the grommet and this is the big difference, the big before and after. So this is an original 1125 hose, so not very different and you can just use it interchangeably, get it through your grommet. Make sure the grommet stays in place. Now you have to kind of eyeball it how long you want it. Get it on that poly tube. And this is when you will use your hoops. And I would actually not use the cable straps before you have mounted the fuel line that's going here because you might get that it's a little bit in the way too high too low but this is also why you have the hoops for instance and this is what it will look like in the end So try that or, or don't try that at home. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I hope you learned something and that we made it clearer so you understand yeah. how and what to do. Yeah, it's, I, think, I think it's quite straightforward. Yeah. Um, if you have any questions, uh, contact Julia or me. Um, thanks for watching us. Yeah. Take care, everyone. And... Thank God it's Friday. Because yeah, really. Lot of Friday. Yeah. Stay all safe. Yes. And um, we we'll see us again next, next week. Week, yeah. Yeah. Take Bye. care. Bye. Bye. Bye.